Hello, everyone. Oh, I feel like I'm not sitting up. Uh, welcome to this week's Monday Night live stream. Today, we're going to talk about aquarium plants. I thought it would be kind of nice to tie this into last week when we talked about best aquarium fish. Maybe we can make this like a two part series and uh, best beginner fish. And now this week, we can talk about best beginner plants. And to be honest, uh, I feel like there's a lot of people out there that want to get into plants, but maybe are a little nervous, a little standoffish and uh, maybe had some bad luck. So I want to talk about some easy plants and there's so many easy plants. Um, I don't know that we're going to get through them all, but welcome your suggestions as well. Um, I know like one of them that didn't make the list would be the banana plant because uh, that seems like a plant that someone can just grow without even trying. They can like put it in a five gallon bucket with no light and it grows and then other people uh, like me can put it in the in a high tech, low tech, whatever, and it never grows. So, <laughs> um, I got a long list of plants to talk about. Uh, but first, I'd appreciate it if you guys could share this out so we can get some people in here. Uh, I know it's been shared a little bit already, so thank you, Candy, for sharing out the stream and others. Can't hear you very well. Hmm. We had this problem last week, and I turned the volume up. Hmm. Let me see. How's it with everyone else? Because the volume is on my computer is pretty high up. Colin says, I can hear you fine. Hear you fine. Your volume is fine. Okay. I'm not going to touch it. We're just going to keep going. Uh, so where were we? Sharing it out. Oh, and then real quick, I want to show you guys something. So you see, you see uh, the hat Murphy? See the Murphy hat? Check this out. You guys are about to be jealous. Oh, yeah. The Murphy hoodie one of a kind and nobody else has this hoodie yeah i know you guys are jealous i know it i know it i know it it also says aquarium co-op down this sleeve and then brand ambassador down the other sleeve there's a murphy on the back as well it's pretty nice it's a pretty nice hoodie not gonna lie um a lot of people coming over from Corey. sounds good sounds good crisp and clear i hear you fine we are good to go you are bordering on pretty high that's what I thought. After last week, I turned it up pretty high this week, and hopefully hopefully it's not terrible. So let's get into the very first plant and what I think. <laughs> you suck, I want one. <laughs> That's, right. That's right. I don't know if you'll be able to see the Murphy on the back, but there it is. So when we did the mock-up, like the place that we got the hoodie from, it didn't actually show the hoodie part of it on the back of the mock-up, so we put it on there. And then we got it, in, I got it obviously in real life, and it has a hoodie in real life, and it covers Murphy on the back. So I'm like, oh, that was the only downfall of this hoodie, but it's still really awesome. So I'm matching. Murphy, Murphy. Yep, and it's soft and comfy like a hoodie should be. Anyways, let's, let's get into plants. Enough about Murphy. Murphy loves plants too, so that's what we're going to talk about. Um, save your questions. The first, I don't know. Um, the first part of the stream, I'm just going to run off some plants and then we can talk about it. And, uh, so save your questions till the end. Also, I got to thank Scott's aquatics for, uh, becoming a member. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But the first plant, in my opinion, the easiest plant ever, Anubius, right? I mean, who cannot grow Anubius? Now there's different variations of Anubius and there's different level of difficulty with some Anubius. Um, if we're talking... In my experience, the easiest Anubius plant is Anubius Nana. Just good old Anubius Nana. It, even Anubius Nana Petite, super easy plant. Um, my favorite Anubius, however, is Coffifolia, which is still easy, but easiest has to be duckweed, yeah. I specifically, I'm just gonna throw this out there right now, because um, someone said duckweed. I left out all floating plants. Not a single floating plant made my list because all floating plants are easy I mean they're right up by the light they usually you know most of your water circulation is usually towards the top as well so it's pretty hard to fail with floating plants and I, I realize some people probably have but I, I decided to leave floating plants completely off the list if you were forcing me to pick a floating plant I would probably do like salvinia or salvina um, red root floaters they're all easy <laughs> every single one is easy duckweed they're all easy so Anubius, my number one 
easiest plant to grow. And uh, it's a slow grower. There's probably better plants for beginners, but as far as just like the ease, I mean, really. Plant number two on my list. Now, I started this list going off in order, but then I kind of went off that order. So the Anubis is my number one. My second two is definitely Crypt, and specifically Crypt Wendetii. Crypt Wendetii. Uh, there's some secrets to growing crypts when you first buy them. The litmus test. The litmus test. Welcome everyone from Aquarium Co-op. Uh, we'll give this a chance to settle down here. Give you guys a chance to settle down. Uh, yeah, so anyways. Crypt Wendetii. Probably the easiest crypt. There's other easy crypts as well that I put on my list like um, Lucens. Uh, Spiralis is really easy. Um, one of my favorite, we'll talk about my favorite, probably my favorite all-time crypt is Crypt Parva. And uh, it's an easy plant, but it's definitely slow growing even more so than other crypts. So before I started getting spammed here, I was talking about my secret to growing crypts is that when you get them, uh, well, depending on where you get them, right? So if you get a crypt and it's coming in as immersed grown, meaning that it's grown above, out of the water, above water, out of water, whatever, um, you basically like, say you have a crypt when daddy I, um, I don't have anything I could use as an example. I don't know. Here, we'll just use scissors since you're going to use scissors anyways. Now these are green scissors, so this doesn't help at all. But let's say like this green part that you can't see. Well, say this is the pot. And then these are the leaves, right? If it's grown immersed, <laughs> just take scissors and cut all the leaves off and leave about like, if you can, you know, like one to two inches of stem there. Um, and then, and then plant it. Yeah. Plant it with no leaves, cut off all the leaves. Um, so what's going to happen is when you buy your crypts and you plant them, all the leaves are going to melt off and die anyways. So, when you do that, you're going to save yourself the hassle of having to clean up your aquarium with dead, rotting leaves. Um, and then it's going to it's going to transition to submersed grown a lot sooner, too. So that's my little my little crypt hack. And uh, I'll be doing that. I'm getting probably about 75 crypts in this week. And so maybe I'll do a video on how to do that. But I don't know. So when Dead Eye loosens... Parva, Spiralis, easy, easy crypt plants. Um, next, next. Now, after my top two, this is when I started putting it in like groups, in groups. So out of all the mosses, I put, gotta move this real quick. Looked like it was about to fall off. Um, out of all the mosses, I put Java moss as the easiest. Um, I know people that have been around my channel a while have heard me talk a lot about how I hate Java Moss, um, but it has its purposes. It's very good for beginners because it's, it's very hard to kill. Um, it grows different. Like under low light, it's really stringy. Under more light, it's really, com you know, bushy, compact. So I don't know. It's just, uh, why don't I like this plant? It's one of those it's one of those mosses that's impossible to get rid of. Once you have it in your aquarium, I mean, you could try to get rid of it, but if you actually wanted it gone, there's always going to be a little piece of it somewhere. So that's why I don't like it. It also grows kind of sporadically. Um, like I said, if you don't have high light, it gets kind of stringy and goes all over the place. I don't like that. Um, as far as like the next moss on my list is probably going to be Christmas moss. Pretty, pretty bulletproof. And unlike Java Moss, it doesn't just grow all sporadically, um, which is nice, which is nice. A little more expensive, a little harder to come by. Um, but yeah, so Java Moss made my list because it's easy to get for the most part, easy to grow, and it's just not too demanding. And, uh, you know, under high light, it looks good. It does look good under high light. I will give it that. Speaking of Java Moss. I'm going to transition right into Java Fern, any type of Java Fern, Trident, Narrow Leaf, Needle Leaf. I think Narrow Leaf and Needle Leaf is actually the same plant. Just depends on where you buy it from. 
but either way. Uh, I see all the members and all the super chats. I appreciate it. Uh, I'm going to get through my list of plants, and then we will address those. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, I'm almost done here. We're about we're about halfway through my list, a little a little less. I'm going to say that word and just say it completely wrong and get demonetized. So I'm not going to say that hashtag. <laughs> I said it once, and I know I'm going to screw it up if I say it again. All right, so Java Fern, very easy. The only thing I would recommend with Java Fern is like crushed coral in your filter or substrate somewhere, put in crushed coral because it does like, uh, in my experience, it does better in hard water with high pH, uh, but it'll grow in just about anything. I have it growing right now in, in a, like a South American type of biotope. Uh, it doesn't look as good. It's not growing as fast, but it's not like... What, what am I trying to say? It's like a lot of times with Java moss, if it's unhappy, it starts to turn brown, like the leaves start to turn brown. It's not doing that, so that's good. Uh, but it's definitely not growing as fast as I would like it to, but I can expect that with the aquarium or the, the parameters that I have it in. So Java fern, very easy. A super duper easy plant, Sagittaria. Any Sagittaria. Um, dwarf Sagittaria is really awesome carpeting plant, super easy. I wouldn't really call it a carpeting plant per se because it still gets pretty tall. Um, but yeah, subulata, um, narrow leaf, all of it. Awesome plant, easy plant. Um, and I think it's probably, if I had to rank a plant as number third, um, as far as easy plants, definitely, probably, uh, hmm, is there a specific one? No, I think any Sagittaria is pretty easy to grow. Any, any Sagittaria. Now I have another one that's kind of controversial to me, and that's Vallisneria. Um, there's multiple different types: Italian Val, Americana, um, and it's the the reason I say this plant is controversial because it's another one of those plants where number third, number third. Yeah, this would be. Can I can I do that? No. I can't do that. Not on YouTube. Uh, anyways, so the reason that I say this is controversial because, it's, it, it, again, it's like banana plant. It's one of those plants that people can grow easily and have to throw away, like, bagfuls of it per week. Or there's people like me that can't grow it at all. So um, I could literally walk out into a pond that has the, the exact same water parameters as my tanks, pull it out of a pond, put it in my tank, it'll melt and never grows back. Nope. Um, but I feel like more people have success with it than fail like me, so it didn't make the list as an easy plant. Just be aware, if you are new to planet tanks, that it may die back. Just be patient. It'll grow back. Except if you're me. All right. <laughs> I want to talk about stem plants. Um, there's two stem plants. There's a lot of stem plants that are easy. A lot of rotalas are easy. Uh, but for me, easy easy stem plants that made my list were willow hygro, um, hygrophila angustifolia. Super easy plant to grow. Um, it would appreciate you know some, some type of fertilizer like easy green, uh, but not really necessary. Uh, as long as you keep up on your water changes and you're in your, you know, replacing your minerals. Um, but yeah, Willow Hygro, super easy. It looks good. In my opinion, it looks way better than Jungle Val. Like any, any tank that I would put Jungle Val in, I would put Hygrophila in, um, in its place because in my opinion, it looks way better and it's easier to grow for me. Um, another stem plant is Pogostemum stellatus octopus. Super awesome, easy to grow plant. Now, obviously, all these plants are going to grow better with high light, CO2, fertilizers, blah, blah, blah. But we're talking about beginners here. Okay, beginners aren't going to have like CO2 setups and Fluval 3.0s. I mean, it would be nice if they did, but generally speaking, uh, you know, again, we're going for beginners. Bob Kaler says, Willow is awesome. Yeah, it is. If I was forced to pick like five of my favorite plants, it would definitely be in the top five. I don't know where in the top five, but definitely in my top five. And of course you have your plants like water sprite, water wisteria, um, super easy. You can plant them, you can float them. Um, 
I don't know. They're those are probably they're probably on my list for beginners, but why would I not have them on my list? Hmm. I think it depends on what you want to do. Like on the thumbnail, it's in my thumbnail, and the reason I don't like it is I think it grows too out of control. So maybe it's a good plant for beginners because you're gonna get like a really some super dense vegetation with those two plants. They grow insanely fast. They suck up nitrates. So yeah, I guess I would have to put like water sprite, wisteria, in the beginner plants. Um, thoughts on allo alleopathy? I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but we can get to that. I got one more plant I want to talk about, and I wanted to I wanted to think of a carpeting plant as as a question I get a lot is what's an easy carpeting plant and by far it's gonna be dwarf chain sword by far now dwarf chain sword is it a carpeting plant I don't know it gets like seven inches um, it can stay smaller with really high light but generally I'd say it's in that like five to eight inch range which still looks pretty good still looks pretty good there's micro chain sword that stays like under two inches I don't know that I would consider that a beginner plant. Um, you, you don't need highlight, you don't need CO2, but it takes forever to spread without it. So you can carpet. I have carpeted with a uh, micro chain sword with no CO2, no highlights, but it took like a year. So uh, that was an, an experience, an experiment I was working on. And uh, yeah, it took like a year to carpet. Uh, what is that? My 29 gallon tank, I think I did it in. And then I did the same thing with uh, dwarf hair grass with no CO2 and without high light. And that was another one that took forever. So it can be done, but um, yeah. But that pretty much rounds up my list. Um, I had moss balls on my list as well, but I mean, moss balls, I mean, that's algae. <laughs> Anyone could grow algae. So um, I, I initially had moss balls on my list, but I took it off because if you can't grow algae what are you doing in this hobby for real <laughs> i'm just kidding so that's my list i'm gonna address these uh super chats here real quick we've got aquarium co-op with the litmus test Whew. thanks for the five dollar super chat michael young same thing lit must test <sighs> i'm i'm gonna screw that word up if i keep saying it charlie seven eight four two becoming a member clay d becoming a member thank you I would highly recommend checking out my last members only video. It features an aquarium co-op Murphy, this guy right here and right here music video. So, you know, it's pretty awesome. Um, Karen says hi from New Zealand with the $5 super chat. Thank you. I actually hope to visit New Zealand someday. Uh, if we're ever allowed to travel again and fish tank barn with a dollar 50. Thank you. fish tank barn. I appreciate it. Uh, Q Aquatic says I can grow algae. Yeah, yep. Uh, Streetwise, that is an excellent point. It says slow plant, slow plants build patience, but some are going to require lots of patience. Lots of patience. Um, I left Amazon Swords off my list um, because they're really, really heavy root feeders, and I feel like a lot of people fail with sword plants the first time. And you know, they buy sword plants, they fail. They research them and they're like, oh, root tabs. Now it's easy. Now it's easy with root tabs. Um, not everyone is starting out with like eco complete substrate right off the bat. So, yeah. Uh, Blixa japonica. I don't know that I would put J Blixa japonica um, on a beginner list. It's an amazing plant. It's actually probably in my top five as well. Um, but I don't know that I would put it on one of my like easy to grow. Uh, Jack. Kawamoto says lit must test and Bob Kaler with the $1 super chat. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> oh man. So Lopez says boost of philandria. Yes. I was actually going to talk about uh, boost because it's basically just as easy as Anubius. There's, there's some things I don't like about boost. Like I feel like people just make up names. Every time I go to shop for boost, there's like a hundred new species of boost every time. And it's always these wackadoodle names that I feel like people are just like making up on the fly. Half of them look the same, but they all have different names. I don't know, boost plants. 
I do love them though. They're they're awesome. They're easy. They're just a your typical rhizome plant. It's hard to mess them up, but um, they're pretty slow growing. They're pretty slow growing. Will aquatic plants get root bound if they are potted in glass? Um, I feel like eventually some would. Um, things that are heavy root feeders like crypts and swords probably. Um, stem plants probably not. They're they're pulling all their nutrients out of the water column. So, yeah, it really depends on what you're what you're putting in there. Bob says same with guppy names. Yeah, guppy names, kind of getting out of control. But I mean. Boost takes it to like the next level. I mean, let me. I'm just gonna pull this up right now. Where can we go? I know. I know one website that always has some nice. Uh oh, is it not a website anymore, or did I spell it wrong? Uno a momento. Okay, here we go. Um, plants. Boost of philandra. Biblis pink, black centipede, brownie purple. Um, they're not even trying anymore. Boost S046, S043, um, Gitaku popcorn, Boost of Philandria popcorn. Like all these plants look almost like the same. Shine blue, purple mini, T4, <laughs> just species diamond. Like. Who comes up with this stuff? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, what's good instead of pothos if you have cats? That's an excellent question that I cannot answer because I do not keep c cats. C c cats? Sometimes I stutter. Um, so I've never researched that at all. I'm sure there's maybe some people in the chat that can help us out with that one. Uh, we have 467 people here. That's amazing. Um, do you have enough plants that you can go farther between water changes? Uh, yes. So that's kind of a double-edged sword. Some of the, if you have enough plants, you don't necessarily have to water change as often, but the point of water changing when you have plants is to replace minerals that the plants have taken out of the water. So yeah, it's taking, you know, nitrate out of the water. It's eating up your fish poop but it's also taking calcium and all this other stuff that it needs. And by re doing water changes, this is why when you do water changes, your plants pearl. And you'll see a lot of people online, they, they cheat their purling because they'll do a water change, their plants start purling, and they're like, oh, look at my plants purling. I haven't done a water change in like a month either. And it's like, okay, sure, buddy. Sure, that's why we can see the bubbles. <laughs> like You can see the, like, the little micro bubbles on the glass, like, yeah. Sure, you didn't just do a water change. Sure thing. I believe you. <laughs> oh, man. Um, bamboo, maybe for cats? Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Uh, sweet potatoes work amazing for sucking nitrates instead of pothos. There you go. Sweet potatoes. Hmm. Uh, Hannah says, how do I replace calcium in the tank for snails? Their shells are looking sad face. Uh, you could do cuddle bone, cuddle bone, crushed coral, oyster shells, um, just to name a few. You can cheat purling with seltzer water too. <laughs> That's funny. My intake is also purling. I know, and you can always see it too. They're like, "Ooh, look at my what? Look at my plants purling." <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> look at all those micro bubbles over everything. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Uh, wonder shell. Yep, wonder shell. Uh, I need food intel. Dracula doesn't feel well. Thinking of ordering the new Domino's taco pizza or hamburger pizza. Any feedback on them? Well, if you wait an hour and a half, I will come and give you my personal feedback. <laughs> uh, Tums for calcium. See, I've never actually used Tums for calcium, so I don't, I don't like recommending things I've never used. I've used everything else that I mentioned except for Tums. I've heard people talk about it. It's in, like, if you go to, like, a lot of the old school forums... Um, you'll see it there. You'll see a lot of people talk about using Tums, but like there's, I mean, there's other stuff in Tums too. And I, I don't know. Do I want that other, other stuff in my water? I'm not sure. Colin says I go on vacation a lot. So that's why I asked about the water changes. Anything you have for automatic water changes or do you just manually do that? I mean, you can certainly get very sophisticated 
with your auto water changes if you wanted to. Um, I manually change all mine. If it ever got to a point where I was doing a lot of traveling, um, I might I might think about auto water changing. Uh, I mean, it sounds nice to not have to do water changes. It just does it itself. But I like getting in my tanks, and I like the, – the reason I like doing my own water changes is because I can see, like, if things are starting to go wrong, you know, if you lower the water level down, you're in your tank, and it smells really bad. You're like, ah, some Anubius is rotting or maybe a, a snail died or something. So it really allows me to get into my tanks and, you know, just make sure there's nothing funky going on in my tanks. I feel like if I had auto water changes, I probably wouldn't pay that much attention to them. And I probably wouldn't catch things until it's too late. Uh, MW says, how do I prevent plants from becoming covered with algae? So more water flow. Um, also, you need, to, you need to diagnose why you're getting algae. Um, do you have a light deficiency? Do you have some sort of mineral deficiency? Uh, things like that. So ultimately, you'd want to start, you know, maybe you're not fertilizing enough. Maybe you're over fertilizing. A lot of mistakes people make uh, when they get into plants and they start getting algae is immediately they start cutting back the lights, which is like the worst thing you could do. And I mean, I'm telling you, like if you're running your lights eight hours a day and you're getting algae, you know, up, up your CO2. If you're running CO2, increase your, your, your fertilizers. If you're fertilizing, but don't decrease the light, keep, keep the light on however long you want to keep it on and then adjust everything else. And I think that's better because eventually you're going to get down to like keeping your lights on for like an, <laughs> like an hour a day. And you're still going to have algae because you're not correcting the imbalance. You're just creating even an even more imbalance. So yeah, if you start getting algae, don't, don't start cutting back light. That's my advice. A lot of people tell you to cut back light. I wouldn't. Don't do it. Um, one other thing we can talk about real quick, just because this is a a uh, chart that I used almost religiously when I first started getting into plants. And you can look this up yourself. Basically, this is a deficiency. If you just Google um, or duck, duck go. Um, everyone should be using DuckDuckGo, not Google, but you know, what do I know? Um, aquarium plant deficiency chart. And you'll get this. Now this is like, this is like really like simple, dumbed down, but that doesn't mean that it's incorrect. So you can look up, Hey, I'm getting some yellow, yellow in the leaves, iron deficiency, yellow with Brown. What do we got here? Phosphate deficiency. So if you really want to get to get into plants, I would highly recommend learning this chart i mean i had this thing printed out for like the first year that i got into planet tanks and i just kept it in my fish room uh, it's important to note though that all of this everything you see here changes if you're using co2 so if you have if you're injecting co2 not liquid co2 but if you're injecting co2 then all of these deficiencies are going to mean something else so since this is um, since specifically trying to target beginners you know new aquarist um generally not using co2 this is a great chart to go off of and uh, this is why i say like yes you you definitely don't not you definitely don't have to do water changes if you have like you know a ton of plants but you know iron deficient magnesium potassium all this stuff gets re replenished when you do water changes so like i said that's why your plants pearl when you do water changes so one of my like tips when people ask me about planet tanks is to don't skip your water changes. Keep doing your water changes like weekly, bi-weekly. Uh, when I was really heavy into growing plants um, and, uh, you know, not to brag, but I did win a horticulturist of the year for uh, the Greater Seattle Aquarium Society. So, you know, I might know a thing or two, <laughs> um, but I was doing 50% water changes every week in my planet tanks, every week. And the growth was almost unbearable. <laughs> it, it required lots of trimming, but the plants grew like crazy. So uh, John says, I just started using DuckDuckGo. I like it. Yeah. I mean, honestly, DuckDuckGo is the way to go. DuckDuckGo is the way to go. <laughs> whole, different, whole different subject for a whole different channel, though. <laughs> Not what we want to talk about here. <laughs> um, all right. So. Google aquarium plant deficiency chart. 
and there's there's more than just this this is probably the most basic one it gets which is why i think it's the best for beginners but there's ones that go even deeper and uh they say like if x and y is this then this is what you're missing so yeah that's that's you know kind of kind of just base it on your skill level on which chart you want to use but we'll turn that off I'm doing a water change right now. Yep, I was doing water changes earlier. Ben Ochart is here. What's up, buddy? I'm going to need that chart. Yeah, it's like I said, the first year I got into like really heavy into plants. Um, I had that chart. Um, I had that and something else. I don't remember. But I had two things printed out that were always in my fish room. I have to try to remember what the other thing was. Uh, maybe it was the CO2 deficiency because I, I did start injecting CO2. So that could have been it. We have passed 500 people again, two weeks in a row with over 500 people. And I think I missed a super chat. Um, Audrey with the $2 super chat. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh Oh, I always get nervous when I get a message during my live streams. Makes me think something's wrong. Um, I'm live streaming right now. No, right meow. There we go. <sighs> that person knows I'm live streaming too. <laughs> uh, anyways. All right. Joel G with the $2 super chat saying, hello, sweeties. Hello, Joel. Um, Hygrophila pinefinita as a beginner plant. I would never, never recommend that plant to a beginner. Um, so if you don't know what Hygrophila pinefinita is, it's this plant right here and like here and here, but mainly right here. And uh, I would never recommend it to a beginner. That's definitely, I would say you're starting to get into like the moderate range of difficulty with that plant. Uh, it definitely loves high light. And the nice thing about that plant is that the higher the light you use, the more color you get out of it, which is true to be said about just about, just about any plant, especially like Rotala species. Um, Rotala is kind of like Busa philander to me, where there's like a ton of different plants or names, but they all look the same under high light. <laughs> they all turn pink, they all turn orange, and they all, or they're all green, depending on the light. <laughs> The leaf structures are, are the same on a lot of them. So, ooh. Oh, yeah, that's going to get deleted. You can't say that. Danny does life. Yep, I called you out. I said, you know I'm live streaming. <laughs> um, so, Danny, yeah. I think you're still confused, but I'll talk to you after the stream. I'll talk to you after the stream. Um, using a while... Using a wild gone carbon filter would revive water hardness essential. Would use um I'm not sure what you're trying to ask, but I do not believe a carbon filter would uh increase your hardness. If anything, I would think it would decrease it because it's going to going to remove things out of the water. Scottish Aquatics, what's up, buddy? I was just looking at your channel yesterday actually to see if there was anything new going on. And there was nothing. Hope you're doing well, though. <laughs> Cooley Kev says, do you know any resources to identify aquatic plants I find in local Washington streams and rivers? Um, you know, I have looked, but I haven't found anything worth keeping in my bookmarks. So I've gone on to, on to like the Department of Fish and Wildlife. Um, I've, been all, I've been all over the place and um, haven't really found anything great. Anything great. Um, been working behind closed doors, import is on its way and a website up soon. Well, there you go. Keep on grinding, buddy. Um, can you advise me on how to turn my Amazon sword runners into plants the best way? Super easy. You, you can just cut them. All you got to do is cut them. And then, so here, here's the deal with Amazon swords. Look, <laughs> got to show off Murphy any chance I get. Um, as soon as it starts sending runners and those new runners have roots, like a pretty, not like, like one little tiny root, but like, you know, a good couple inches of roots, cut it off, 
cut off the runner and then just plant it. It's really that simple. Really that simple. Uh, what fish besides goldfish will help eat duckweed? That's a good question, and hopefully somebody in chat can answer. Can answer. What else eats duckweed? So I know my goiter river rainbows. Goiter. What a weird word to name a, a fish. Goiter. Anyways, they eat duckweed. Um, it's actually the only rainbow fish that I have that I've kept that's eaten duckweed. So that was pretty cool. Um, I don't have any right now. I need to get some more. Uh, great channel. Best three plants for hard water. Java fern, dwarf sagittaria, and hmm. I mean, Anubius is my favorite, so I'm going to have to say Anubius. But hard, hard water, Java fern all the way. Java fern, narrow leaf Java fern is another plant that would make my top five favorite plants. I... There's nothing like a gigantic, like, imagine like all of this, like just completely bushed out with narrow leaf java fern. And if you guys don't know what that looks like, I'll show you real quick. Um, it's a really, really, I mean, just think of java fern, but with, you know, narrow leaves. <laughs> it's that simple. Let's see here. All right, I'm trying to find like a good, good picture. Um, well, there's just not really anything good. Well, all right, scratch that. I can't find any good pictures. Um, I mean, this is kind of good, I guess. Uh, no, I don't want to show that company though, because that company sucks. Um, here we go. Here we go. So, okay, I found a picture. I found a picture. There you go. Like, I think a gigantic bush of this stuff right here in the middle looks really, really good. And, uh, it can, like, grow along. So like all these branches, it'll just grow along this branch. Uh, I am back really soon. Duckweed is illegal in a lot of states. Hmm. Michelle, I'm surprised duckweed is so popular as well too uh, because it sucks. <laughs> duckweed, when I get a tank infested with duckweed, I just lose like all motivation. Like I don't even, I don't want to, working it i don't want to do water changes it just spreads everywhere it, it gets in my everything it gets everywhere i hate it i hate it so much denny does life says i love narrow leaf and never see it anymore you really don't you have to go to like facebook groups um or specific like forums like planet tank uh which i'm not really a fan of that forum but yeah, it, 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 duckweed is like I hate it or I love it. I love it or I hate it. Duckweed, duckweed, duckweed. Uh, okay, now that I messed up all my screens, let me fix this real quick. All right. Use your words, Candy. Hmm. Um, Wilcox says I made the mistake of putting duckweed in one of my tanks. It was all dead a week later. So what, who, who asked that question like very at the start of the green about Alio whatever? Um, Salvinia is a way better option. Like everything, is, <laughs> any floating plant besides duckweed is a way better option. Uh, I need to see that word again. I can never pronounce it. Uh, hmm. I don't know. Allelopathy. <laughs> yeah, so if you don't know what this is, this is like the chemical warfare, like plants engage in chemical warfare in your aquarium. Um, one thing I have found is that jungle val will kill off uh, duckweed. It's, it's one of the few plants that I find that uh, when it does grow for me, it, the duckweed disappears within weeks. Uh, so it's pretty interesting topic to like research. 
Uh, if you have some time and you want to research it, I would. But they actually like release chemicals. Some plants release chemicals to try and kill other plants. It's crazy. I don't think duckweed is so popular. Uh, it's just an insidious little hitchhiker. Yeah. Yep. Uh, Larry Walter Jr. with the $5 super chat says, Only in the hobby about six months, but found a dwarf aquarium lily. Really easy. So far, starting to leaf like crazy. Yes, I almost put that one on my list, um, but I didn't because you have you have to plant it a certain way, and you have to like pay attention and make sure you're not killing it. Um, but if there was like a, a like a next level, like aquarium lilies would be like right. I mean, there was it was like right on the edge for me um, to include it in my easy plant list, but I did leave it off. Um, and you can get when you do like aquarium lilies in like high light CO2, you can get some like, like beautiful purple leaves, pink leaves. It's really incredible. Uh, what kind of lighting would I recommend? Well, it really depends. So usually when I'm setting up a planet tank, I'll pick out the plants first and then pick out the, like the, what substrate I want and what lighting I want. Um, because if I, if let's just say again like this tank behind me if i did all like anubius i'm not gonna go out and spend like 200 dollars on a fluval 3.0 uh because that would be overkill for anubius uh so it would it really depends but definitely if i'm if i'm really starting to get serious into plants i don't think there's anything better than a 3.0 there's there's definitely things that are like more expensive uh you can start getting into some planted lights that are like four or five hundred dollars which is just ridiculous to me um but yeah i would as far as like high tank i would never do anything higher than a 3.0 it just it's just not needed um upon eating olvaceous is a super easy plant but gets big and grows fast yes and i left all upon eatings off the list um because they they're seasonal so they will die off and i've known some people that like throw the bulb out after it dies off because they just don't know um, so that's why I left it off like my easy because I'd hate to get someone into the aquarium hobby and then ship them some Aponagetans and then, you know, they get this big luscious aquarium because they do like most Aponagetans like get like these giant leaves and they look really awesome and then they just die off. And then that person's like, man, what did I do wrong? I killed them. I did blah, blah, blah. And they take out the bulbs and they trash them because they don't know that they're just going to grow back in, in a month or two. So that's why I left those off the list for beginners, beginners. Uh, Larry Walter Jr., welcome to the Steen Dream Team. The Dream Team. It is. I am, one of the goals I have is to have the best members only section in all of YouTube. Not just FishTube. All. And, yeah, that's my goal. That's my goal. Without mind you like alienating the subscribers because the subscribers subscribers are what's the most important when it comes to youtube uh you're welcome and thank you for the order okay both my shrimp tanks are covered in duckweed i bought flea combs to sift it out here's the thing with duckweed it's one of those plants that you can spend like three hours five hours five days trying to get every little piece out and then it always comes back. There's always a, there's always like some little root that tears off when you're scooping it out and it floats around into the substrate, makes its way back and grows a little leaf. And you're like, oh, it's back. It's back. It, it is seriously like for me, it, 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 it's um, it's a killer for me. I get a tank with duckweed. I'm just like, oh, I don't even want to look at this tank anymore. It's oh, I hate it. It blocks out light. You know, for my plants that I actually care about. Ugh, I hate it. I hate it. Uh, surface agitation will kill duckweed and frogbit. Experience that with undergrab a filter. But I've, I've never had that work, ever. Like, I've had it kill off some of it. But unless you're, like, spraying down the whole tank, like, 24-7, there's always some that lives. Uh, new subscriber here. I want to hear. I want a starter. Wait, I want to start a planted 90 gallon. What filter and substrates should I be looking at? Well, filters pretty subjective. Like I don't like canister filters, so I would never use a canister filter. But you 
might like canister filters and you want to use a canister filter so that you know filter it doesn't really matter as long as you get one appropriate for your aquarium size and things like that so you you, you got to kind of pick your own filter because i i mean i'm gonna i'm gonna be setting up a 300 gallon tank soon and i'm gonna use only sponge filters that's it just sponge filters it's gonna be planted um as far as what substrate i will tell you my favorite substrate is ego complete um it can get kind of expensive it's uh, i think like 22 dollars for a bag like a 20 pound bag so yeah it can definitely get expensive but it is my favorite uh when i set up my 300 gallon i'm actually going to use dirt so it's going to be it's going to be a fun experiment definitely a fun experiment uh, Sue McGill Luminatus and CPD. Somebody must have asked, what fish are back here? That is it. Luminatus and Celestial Pearl and Danios. I love growing Amazon swords under duckweed. So, yeah, that's, that's um, you know, I've seen that look. And thankfully, you can do, like, heavy root feeders with duck feed. Duck feed? Duck weed. Duck weed. Uh, surface skimmer controls duckweed for me. Rickia, on the other hand, Rickia is a plant. If you guys don't know what Rickia is, here. I'll sh well, I don't want to move everything over again. But Rickia is probably the second most annoying plant. The thing about Rickia, though, is at least it doesn't suffocate all your other plants as far as, like, blocking off light. But, yeah, Rickia, it's another one of those plants that if you use it, and then, like, a year later, you want to, like, rescape and get rid of it? You never get rid of it. You never. But, like, a full carpet of Rickia looks amazing. So, is that a 300-gallon behind you? No, it's, like, 40 gallons, 48, 47 gallons. Nope, 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 nope. <sighs> Nerd alert, reading the manual for my new microphone while I listen. Oh, does that mean you're getting rid of the old microphone? Hmm? Hmm? Just bought some pilo moss, pillow moss. Any advice for max profit? My advice is don't buy moss for profit. <laughs> moss um, grows slow, it grows slow. So I would never buy moss as something that I'm going to grow and flip for profit. Because it's one of those things that like once once you grow enough of it to like cut it out and sell it sell it in portions, it's just such small amounts small amounts um so yeah i'm moss in general not one of those plants you want to use for profit in my opinion there's probably one dude that's gonna comment after this video like i grow pillow moss by the by the gallons every single day well you know what that's not everyone else <laughs> there's always that one person uh, nerd alert playing wow while watching this stream now that is a true nerd, nerd alert playing the nerd game while watching a nerd talk about fish <laughs> how cold is too cold for an outdoor guppy tub well i learned this the hard way last year about 58 degrees is when i lost my guppies last year i will say my outdoor tubs right now I was very surprised. So I'm going to I'm going to tell you guys what I did. That was probably very stupid, but it turned out to work is that about two and a half months ago in my pond that has my golden white cloud minnows, I put in I tore down my African cichlid tank and I put my cichlids outside. Um, I saw them a couple times like the first few weeks and I never saw them again. And I was like, well, that didn't work until yesterday last night actually was it last night or the night before i don't know but i took a flashlight out to my tubs and uh they were all out there my my water right now uh is sitting at 62 degrees right before my stream this morning it was at like 57 degrees and my african cichlids are still out there um still living i fed them this morning and they actually came to the surface and fed so they're happy um they don't seem to be stressed out and that's in 60 degree water african cichlids i was i was blown away so 
at least that explains why I don't have any golden white cloud fry because they're clearly eating my fry. But I'm okay with that. Um, I do have to break down the tubs this weekend though. Um, my Radinocentris I'm going to leave out there because word on the street is they can go pretty cold. So it's either going to be an expensive mistake or a successful experiment. We'll see. We'll see. Ooh, someone got in trouble. No one cares about you, brick boy. <laughs> you gone. Uh, how can you control algae in a wall set or dirt tank? I've never had algae in a dirt tank. Um, one of the, that's supposed to be one of the benefits of dirt tanks is that you generally don't get algae, um, and it has to do with like the the carbon in the dirt and things like that. Uh, but I've I've never experienced so I wouldn't have any tips to get rid of it because um, I've only I mean I've only done like four dirted tanks in my life so that's why I've decided to go with dirt on this 300 gallon um, because I think it's gonna be another fun experiment dirt uh, only sponge filters now I'm gonna have um, uh, power heads because you need you need like you need you need water movement especially for planet tanks so um, I'm gonna have three sponge filters one in, uh, in each back corner and then one in the middle. I might go four, um, but at least three. And then uh, I don't know how many power heads. Maybe, maybe like two on each end. Um, one pointed at the substrate and then one at the surface. So it just, you know, uh, creates some, some circulation. Uh, C Baseball says, what is meant by a dirty tank that's it's literally like putting dirt in your tank and that's what you use as substrate <laughs> uh, but you do cap it off so you do like when I do it I do about uh, one and a half to two inches of dirt and then I'll put like an inch of sand or gravel on top of it that way when you fill up your tank with water it doesn't turn into a dirty mess um, but yeah that's that's pretty much it when we say dirt tanks we literally mean we put dirt in our tanks <laughs> Uh, any advice for Moss Profit besides Java Moss? Like, I don't know that there's like, man, it's just not a plant that's grown for profit. Like, you can you can get some extra income out of it, but definitely not profit. Um, I got no advice for you because every moss. I I mean, I've had like every moss under the sun, and none of it grows fast enough for me to consider profit. When you talk about you know, power, paying for fertilizers, uh, water, you know, you're paying for water for water changes. It's, it's just not, it's just not going to be something that's good for profit. Can you make extra money? Certainly. But when you start talking about profit, you want plants to grow fast. You want, you, you want stem plants, um, floating plants, guppy grass. Well, guppy grass, not a good shipper, but you know, you want fast growing plants generally. Uh, do I know of a tiny pump that would fit on a co-op sponge filter? Well, there isn't. There's three sizes to the sponge to the co-op sponge filters. So, which one do you mean? Which sponge filter? Uh, any advice for plants for profit? Yes. So fast growing plants, stem stem plants, highlight CO2 and fertilizers, and you'll be trimming stem plants like twice a week at least. Stem plants is the way to go. I mean, really. Um, if you really want to get like really nerd out, you can start like looking up like immersed setups, um, to grow plants out of the water. But generally I don't like that because people are going to buy your plants. They're going to die back and people are going to be like, these plants are crap. So, um, granted they, they grow back. Obviously if you're growing them out of the water, you put them in water, they die off, they grow back. That's just, just what happens. But, um, so I really don't like doing um, immersed. I've done it for myself, but never for like profit just to resell. Cause when I'm selling a plant, um, and I used to, before I, before I started YouTube, that's basically what I did. And that's how I earned, um, like my master horticulturist award and horticulturist of the year. That's what I did. I grew plants and I sold them in Facebook groups and then I started YouTube. And so I didn't really have time for that stuff anymore. I was like, okay, I've done that. It's time to move on to the next part of the hobby. Um, but yeah, when I was selling plants, it was stem plants. You know, there's like, 
Anubias and Crips and things like that, while they're easy, they don't grow fast enough for profit. Um, you know, you could do like, there's some floating plants that do do well, like, like Wisteria and Water Sprite that I talked about earlier, um, sell really well. The problem is finding a place to sell them quick enough, which is usually Facebook. Um, I used to list plants on Aquabid, but Aquabid, the plant section can get really toxic, <laughs> really toxic. Like th I feel like there's literally people that just sit on Aquabid all day long, like sellers. And as soon as somebody lists something, they'll relist their auction for cheaper, like nonstop happens all the time. At least it used to like years ago when I was doing Aquabid. So, um, I've had some success on eBay selling plants. Um, but the easiest, the easiest, fastest was usually plants, uh, plant groups and Facebook. Uh, Escobar says, Bob, glad to see you have Luminatus back. I have bred mine since I couldn't find more, since I could find more. Question, do you think the 24-7 Planet Plus is a highlight on a 55-gallon? Hmm. So, I haven't used a Planet Plus since the very first generation 24-7. Would I consider that to be high light? I don't think so. Uh, but again, that light now is like four years old now. Um, and I haven't I haven't played with Phoenix, like new Phoenix lighting in a really long time. So, but just based off my experience from like years ago in Phoenix, I don't, I don't think so. Um, there was always other Phoenix lines that were way brighter um, than the 24 seven. Like, uh, when I, I had a 55 gallon tank that I grew all my plant clippings in and I used two four foot lights on that. Um, so yeah, one was the Phoenix planet plus, And then the other was like the, I want to say the, the monster ray. I, it's been so long since I've even looked at Phoenix that I, I don't remember the lines anymore. Like the, or the different models. Um, John says I have pillow moss, guppy grass and wisteria, wisteria. Uh, which which will sell for more profit wisteria all day long it's going to be the fastest growing and the most durable guppy grass gr grows fast but it doesn't really ship that well um, you could ship it 10 times and you know eight out of ten times it'll make it but then the two you're gonna have to replace so yeah I don't I don't know that I would consider that uh, a good choice a good choice uh, how much flow difference does a 90 degree elbow make on a sponge filter? I can honestly say I've never tested it out. <laughs> I've, yeah. Does it make, I, I don't know. Like I'm imagining it. I don't think it would be significant at all, at all. Now, if you're talking about doing it like a matten filter where you're running it all the way to the top and then doing a 90 degree elbow, that's going to be more significant than just putting a 90 degree elbow on the top of the outlet of the sponge filter. Um, I have a Phoenix planted uh, CC get better. Anything better. I don't even know what the CC is. See, like I've been out of it for so long. Um, you can maybe DIY for an elbow fitting on top of your uptake on the sponge. Uh, if you're talking to me about like my 300 gallon, 300 gallons is going to be way too much water to even try to get flow out of a sponge filter. So, yeah. I mean, I don't even think sponge filters give you enough flow in like a 40 gallon, let alone a 300 gallon. But in when I like set up like when I go like hardcore my planet tanks, I like lots and lots and lots of flow. I don't want dead spots. When you start getting dead spots, that's when all like your decaying leaves they'll just build up there. You'll get algae there. So, more flow the better uh do plants need flow yes is a wave maker or power head needed in a planet tank it really depends so if you have a 40 gallon uh tank with a hang on back filter probably not this is one of the reasons i do use hang on back filters is just for flow um so yeah uh if you have like a 40 gallon breeder and a sponge filter then you might want to think about more flow more flow Best moss for profit. I want to answer this one more time. None. There is no moss to grow for profit. 
They just all moss grow slow. There's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> so they don't make good plants to grow for profit. Like I said, they make good plants to grow for extra income every couple months. You might get an extra, you know, 20 bucks, but no. Uh, sump on the 300? No. Curtis, I'm only doing sponge filters on my 300 gallon. That's it. Because I'm under the impression that almost everyone's tanks are over filtered. Like you have all this excessive crap that you don't need. Um, and I'm going to prove it to everyone with a 300 gallon tank. I mean, you already have Lucas proving it, right? Um, Lucas has sponge filters. That's it. Not all of his tanks, but he still has like the, you know, he still buries them in some of his tanks. So we'll see. We'll see if it works. I am I am 100% like you don't need a $5,000 canister filter. That's a pain in the butt to maintain. Uh, you don't need even more expensive sumps. Although between the two, I would always pick a sump. <laughs> But yeah, <sighs> love hang on the backs, but I'm at the limit for things I can plug in. Yeah. So, I mean, that's like I said, that's strictly if I have a hang on back on one of my tanks, it's for flow. That's all I'm using it for is flow. Um, or, you know, if I have like something happen in the tank and I had like a lot of plant die off and I'm just trying to remove all that decaying matter. Uh, that's, that's what's uh, that's what's nice about hang on backs is they're easy, they're quick. Like, but I don't keep them running all the time. Like, I'll just throw a hang on back on the on a tank for like a week. I'll put in some batting, clear the water, get all that crap out of there, and take it right back off. You use two seventy-five gallon sponges on my forty gallons. Yep, yep. Best plants for profit, please and thank you. I'll answer this one more time. Stem plants, stem stem plants, Rotala willow high grow um stem plants stem plants anubias is another plant that grows too slow for profit um there's a reason that people aren't doing it right um uh, you have to you, you know you have these big massive plant farms growing anubias out of water because that's how they grow fast and you have to like you have to do like five thousand of them at a time to be profitable i'm exaggerating you could probably do like a hundred but at that scale you're really getting pretty highly invested in your in your growing operation you'd have to be pretty serious my jungle valve uh, my jungle valve has been in my tank for six months didn't grow an inch good light no co2 fertilizing tabs fluorite substrate what can i do you just got to be patient this is exactly what happens with jungle valve um if it's the good sign is is that it's not dying back but jungle valve is one of those tanks that tanks is one of those plants that can sit in your tank for like a year and not do anything and then all of a sudden boom it's everywhere for some reason it just takes jungle val sometimes it just takes a really really long time for jungle val to acclimate to get happy to adjust i don't know why but yeah i've it's always been like the bane of my plant existence definitely it's jungle val i tell you gotta be patient just gotta be patient uh for about a month they're growing brown and laying not sure what you're talking about best moss for profit <laughs> i'm gonna <laughs> i tell you <laughs> my val sat at two little plants for four months and now i've got 20 plus in the last three weeks exactly my jungle val is six weeks old old and huge already co-op plants for the win for the win uh i don't feel like you've talked enough about plants for profit especially mosses i don't know boy fissidens fontanus fissidens fissidens moss there you go if you're gonna grow a moss for profit do fissidens because everyone loves fissidens all right i have a 20 gallon long with dual sponge filter it has a gentle flow but it's just on half the tank would you recommend a nano wave maker well it depends on what you're trying to get out of it it has you have a 20 gallon long with a dual sponge oh is it like one of the ones with like the dual thing and then the uptake tube in the middle and it kind of grows out i don't know that i would do a wave maker like even a small one is going to be a lot in a 20 gallon um 
I would say maybe get another one of those sponge filters and put it on the other side. Put it on the other side. Dead Fred 821, what's up, buddy? I would have made up a moss by the fifth time he asked. <laughs> kind of like snipe hunting. Snipe hunting. <laughs> Boy, if you guys have never been snipe hunting. <laughs> oh, man. It's been a long time since I've heard about snipes. Um, Killers Aquatics with the $5 super chat. Thank you, Bob. I appreciate it. Um, Sorry, I didn't read that. I don't know how they are. My vowel grows super fast with loving soil under pool sand. Yeah, so again, that's what's that's that's how it is with Val. They could stay dormant for like a decade, and then you have a billion of them, or you have a billion of them right off the bat. So I guess my what I'm trying to say is, when it comes to Jungle Val, buy it locally. If you have the option, you know, through a local club member, local Facebook group, that way it's already adjusted to hopefully your water. Now, you could get in situations like, Someone could buy it locally from me that's only like five miles away, but five miles away from me puts you on well water and I'm on city water. So you're going to go from soft to hard. So, you know, I guess what I should say is try to buy plants from people with the same type of water if you want to be successful. Um, things to stay away from. Plant flippers. Plant flippers. I've warned and warned and warned about this. I don't know how many times on my live streams when we talk about plants, but there are a lot of online vendors that buy plants and sell them the next day. Some of them even sell them the same day. Now, why is that bad? Because 100% of the plants that you get from farms are grown out of the water. Now, that's not even exaggerating. It might, uh, it might be like 96%. But almost every single plant you get is out of the water. So I'll spend a thousand dollars from this farm. I'll bring in all these plants, put them on my website the same day. They sell out. I ship them out the next day. This is what people do. This is like the worst way to do plants um, if you want to be successful. The worst way to buy plants. Now, how do you know who's a plant flipper? Well, you, you just got to vet, right? Don't go to. I wouldn't go to like random websites like aquarium plant super easy will grow mega fast.com forward slash give me your money um definitely vet them um you know places like aquarium co-op that convert all their plants before they sell them uh they're definitely not a plant flipper so yeah let's just whew. talk about a way and and this is this is exactly why i don't like plant flippers because I mean, most people that buy from these places are new people that are just getting into planted tanks. They don't know any better. Most people, when I first got into plants, I had no idea what the difference between immersed and submersed. I had no idea. When I first found out that they grow aquarium plants out of the water, I was like, what? How is that even possible? Like, I didn't even know it was possible. And so when you get someone new and they're buying plants from this plant flipper because they saw someone make a YouTube video and they're like, oh, this guy's on YouTube. He must know what he's talking about. And then you get this plant, and it dies off. And again, yes, that's normal. But in, someone new to the hobby doesn't know that, and they're just like, man, I just wasted all my money. I and then and then the person always assumes that they did something wrong. I did something wrong. I got these plants in. I did something wrong. So I'm gonna go buy more plants and do it different. Do something different this time because it was my fault. I killed the plants. So they go back to the same person and buy them again. I, I see this happen so often and it just annoys me to no end. Of course they get the plants again and they die again. And they still don't know that that's normal. Like you gotta be patient, that they will grow back. <sighs> Man. So definitely vet who you're buying your plants from. And uh, yeah, maybe I should, I should write a book. Maybe I'll write a book, how to be successful with because it's really not that hard. Plants are actually very easy. I would even wager that it is easier, if you're buying plants from a good source, it is easier to grow plants than it is to clean the algae off your fake plants every water change. <laughs> like, growing plants is not hard. It's just not. But you have to buy from a good source. 
Um, Mike says, I've had that experience with plants. I've had to try plants out and see what worked. Some worked right away. Others did horribly, only to come back with a vengeance, and now they are doing great. Yep. Yep. Uh, my nitrates are always below 10 parts per million. I have small pothos growing, which probably doesn't help. Root feeders uh, doing well with root tabs, but floating plants are really struggling. Dose ferts. Yep. I would say a lot of plants are going to are gonna have issues with uh, 10 parts per million or less. Um, I think a lot of people are, are, I think a lot of people are afraid of high nitrates. Realistically, it's usually not a problem. And when I say high, I mean like, you know, 40, 40 is a really 30 to 40 is a really good number for planet tanks. M most fish, it's not even going to be a problem at all. I'm trying to go for plants that are past beginner. Uh Oh, where to go? Uh, but still low tech. There's not much content on plants. Do you have recommendations? So this is where I would get into like uh, Blixa japonica, uh, which is a really cool plant. Um, when you're when you're past like the like all the normal stuff like the Anubias, the Crips, you have to go to places like this is where places like the PlanetTank.net are a good source because you're gonna find sign up, go to the uh, like the classified sections and just look look at all the plants and you're gonna be like whoa there is so many plants um that is what that is like one of the good things i feel about the planet tank.net is that i don't know there's okay i'm not even gonna get into the negatives we're just gonna stay positive that's one of the good things about that site is that there's a ton of information on there so yeah planet tank i think it's it's the planettank.net or planettank.net. Let me make sure. The the planettank.net. Hopefully this website didn't get taken down. I haven't been to here in a while. Definitely not that one. planettank.net. planettanks.net. It's a forum. So that's what you're looking for. Um, what? That didn't work either. Maybe it's not even a website anymore. I don't know. Planted tank. Oh, maybe I typed it wrong because Candy has it. There we go. That's the one. So when you go to, you do have to sign up to see the classified. So if you go to this site and you don't create an account, you're not going to see the section for classifieds. So sign up. I know it's a pain, but then you'll see the section for uh, classified and people selling plants. And that's, I mean, honestly, this, that's where I found out about all these plants. There's, um, oh my gosh, what's, what's the orange plant that's really cool, uh, but not like high difficult or, but it's not easy. It's like, and it's some weird name, like Angelodia Kufa Folidolia. I don't know. I can, it's such a ridiculous name. I can never remember it. Uh, man. Someone, someone save me. An Anna Galodia Kufa Labodia. <laughs> I don't even know. It's a stupid name, but it's one of the coolest plants ever once you get past, like, the beginner. Gosh. It's seriously, it's like 100 letters long. Angelodia. I feel like that's not wrong. Somebody save me. Where's Bentley? Kufa. Blood vomit. Blood vomit is actually a really cool plant. I'm on. I'm on a mission. Uh man. No one's saving me. No one's saving me. All right, you're gonna make me go to my my plant list. Angustifolia. Nope. 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 Um. Oh, alter AR mini, AR mini. That would be a good one for, uh, you know, getting past. Uh, oh no, I want Google Documents, Google Sheets. I think somewhere I have a list. <sighs> We're gonna take a a brief intermission here, a brief intermission. Docs, Google Docs. That's what I meant. Go to Google Docs. There we go. Um, I'm pretty sure I have a letter of nothing. Uh, Google Sheets, maybe?
<laughs> Rotala Mini Butterfly. Um, that would be a good one. Um, oh man, it's not in here. Um, that is that would be a good one, um, Daniel. That's a the golden. That's a good one for you know, like a medium skill level. Uh, AR Mini is a good one. Kufia Al yes, Kufia something. That's it, Kufia. Thank you, Kufia Al. Al yeah, it's it's that's not right, but it's pretty close. It's pretty close. Yes, there it is. Kufia Anna Galodia. Ah, boy, what a name. So this plant right here. If you can get this plant, this plant is amazing. Um, it's one of the few, like, true orange plants. Let's see if I can find a good picture to show you guys. That wasn't even close to what you said. I don't know what I'd be saying. Jeez. Okay, yeah, here we go. Here we go. Let's go to here. Oh, whew. I almost showed stuff that I didn't want the internet to see. That would have been bad. There we go. Here we go. Look at this plant. Orange, 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 orange. Right, right here. Oh, you can't see that one? Let's go here. No, that's not that orange, but this one's orange. This is a really, really cool plant, and it's not very hard to grow. But I definitely would not put it in the easy. There's, There it is right there. Um, we might even be able to go back to, like, really old-school steam fought videos. Um, sign in. What? What did I do? Anyways. There you go. Now that I messed up all my screens again. Uh, I was expecting it to be way cooler than the buildup. The pictures, I will tell you, the pictures do not do it justice at all. Um, not even close. It's it's a real, it, I mean, it's just a stem plant, so, you know, don't get too excited. But it's really cool. It's pretty rare. So, yeah. <sighs> Where's Lucas when you need something for now? Let me tell you about Lucas. That guy just makes it up as he goes along. The trick is to just make, to just sound like you know what you're talking about. Kufia anagalodia. You got to admit, that's a pretty weird name. Anagalodia. Man. German blue ram tank mates, just about anything. Uh, they're great fish for community tanks. Gorgeous golden color. Thank you, Audrey. Thank you. It's it's a really cool plant. Really cool plant. Uh, what would you say the skill level is on blood vomit? Well, patience level, extremely high. So there, there's that. You definitely need very high patience for that plant. Um, it's not really the fastest growing plant out there. So like I said, it's... Uh, just take patience and to make it actually look like blood vomit. So blood vomit, um, it's a plant. It gets like really, it, it can get like red tips on it. Um, I would, I would put skill level pretty high on it to be honest with you, because a lot of people can't make it actually look good. Um, and a lot of people kill it. So I would, I would definitely have that as like a higher skill, like definitely on the high end. I'm trying to uh, do something here real quick without. Well, that's not going to work. All right. I have pictures of when I kept that plant, but I'm not going to be able to pull them up on the fly here. Uh, is Bacopa Carolina an easy plant? Yes. Dan Leach, I would consider that definitely. Um, I don't know that there is a Bacopa plant that's not easy. It is a great, great beginner plant. Um, and it, it's a great novice plant too. Uh, it, it generally stays um, bushy. So when we're talking about stem plants, a lot of things that happen with like Rotala, 
um, Lugwidia, is that, that once they grow high, you know, the, the bottom part of the stem doesn't get light, and so they get really just shaggy. All the leaves die off. Oh, excuse me. And Bacopa is one of the plants that it can happen with Bacopa, but it's usually not that big of a deal. Like the bottom, the bottom part of the stem usually stays pretty well leafy greeny, <laughs> uh, even when it's not getting that light. So uh, I think it's a it's a really cool plant. It, it's it's uh, I guess the the bush effect is really high with that plant. Would pea puffers be okay in a pond with seven inches height around eighty to hundred gallons? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, Aub Aubrey says I'm having no luck with bulbs. There, they do nothing. So you have to plant them a specific way, and you really have to like pay attention. Um, as soon as they start to get roots, like you got to flip it over and put the roots in the substrate. And I think where a lot of people go wrong is they just like half bury the bulb, and if it's upside down, it's it's gonna kill it if you're not paying attention. Um, the other issue with roots, or not with roots, but with bulb plants, is again, if you're buying from a bad source, they could be dead right off the bat. So, you know, definitely check your source. But in my experience, like bulb plants, I'd rather buy ones that are already sprouted, personally. Uh, poor dude, it's almost over. Cool setup behind you, man. Computers me off. What? Computers something will join ASAP. Thanks for all. Everyone have a good night. Bunny Viper. Thank you. Is it almost over? Ah, uh, we still got a half hour. Still got a half hour. Bunny Viper. I don't know why I like that name, but I do. Bacopa, Bacopa, Bacopa. High, high bush level with Bacopa. Um, Katie says, dang it, was stuffing my face with Taco Bell listening versus watching the stream? What? Taco Bell is gross. Gross. Uh, so let the bulb sit on the substrate and plant when the roots show. Yep. Or even just float it. Whatever. I meant to say, who named a blood vomit? <laughs> who knows who names any of them? Right? I don't know. Got an essay due at 12, so keep going. <laughs> Jeez. Boy. Uh, one of my friends managed to kill duckweed. I'm not going to lie. I was really impressed. I can't kill it no matter how hard I try. I'm in the same boat. Can't kill it. Uh, blackout for like a week. Still there. Still there. It might be like a little white, but it's... I hate it. I hate it so much. Uh, Susan says, set up one year old, 75 gallon with eco complete with goldfish, lilies, nana, maybe Anubis nana, and others. Uh, I'm now having issue with cloudy brown water. What am I doing wrong? Um, it could just be your goldfish. So I'm guessing your goldfish have probably grown quite a bit in a year. And goldfish are poop factories. So. You might just need to up your water change. Um, I don't know. Maybe you have some plants dying back. Um, if you're not, like, vacuuming your gravel, maybe the goldfish are, like, because goldfish will go after that gravel, and they'll kick up all kinds of crap. So uh, my guess is, though, is that your goldfish have probably grown a lot, and they're just pooping a lot more. But I could be wrong. Tough to diagnose. Uh, I'm trying to pick up a carpet plant for shrimps, but I can't choose... Dwarf baby tears or styrogen repens? Styrogen repens always gets my vote over anything. If it's styrogen repens or there's no no other point to finish that sentence. Um, styrogen repens would be another one that I would put at like the moderate level. So you've had your luck with beginner plants. You want to try a little harder. Styrogen repens for sure. It's a really, really good plant and uh, looks really cool. If you get like a carpet of stars and repens who looks good looks really good hope this is okay to post for planet tank info probably the best website is the two-hour aquarist by dennis wong dennis wong is awesome yep i have been subscribed to dennis wong for decades i was subscribed to him even before youtube was a website <laughs> but yeah really really good planet tank dude um used to come around here not so not so much anymore but 
Yeah, still, you can never go wrong with, with Dennis Wong for Planet Tanks. Uh, I just like the way it both looks, so it was a hard choice. Yeah, I mean, Dwarf Hair Grass is cool too, but or Dwarf Baby Tears. I would say that Baby Tears is going to be considerably harder to grow, but it will spread faster. But, you know, either way. Um, Ultra Cularia Graminifolia. Um... I would not say that's an easy plant, and also that plant will eat your baby shrimp. So if you're doing shrimp, don't do it. That is a carnivorous plant. Just be careful. Just saying. Just saying. My African cichlids are the only tanks without duckweed. Luckily, I use all different equipment between rooms. Uh, it's the nets. It's the nets that always get you. There's always like one little piece of duckweed hanging out in the net, and you're, you don't see it, and you go to a different tank, and then it's over. That tank is ruined for life. For life. I will throw a wrench in that and say Stargen to Porto Velo. That's now we're getting a little bit more rare. <laughs> That's gonna be a little bit harder to find than just uh good old fashioned repens. S S repens. I do feel like a plant that has gone away is AR Mini. Um I would love to get a hold of that. AR Mini in, um, what am I trying to say here? It's really easy. And I just, I don't see it anywhere. Like, where can I buy some AR Mini? I want to buy some AR Mini right now. AR Mini for, oh, that's going to give me a gun. I already have one of those. Um... Alter Netheria Renikii for sale. There we go. Wow. AJ, what's up, buddy? Um, out of stock. Out of stock. Out of stock. Where's the Rick? He gone. He's gone. He's hanging out with Solid Gold. Yep. I think uh, Solid Gold took the route of the Rick. And they are gone forever. AR comes in a mini variety. Yes, and it comes, you can get it in red or pink, as a matter of fact. Susan says, follow-up, does Eco-Complete break down and time frame? Thanks for answering. Eco-Complete. How often would I replace Eco-Complete? Probably maybe at like the four-year mark. Four-year mark. Um, so yeah, it definitely breaks down. Some people replace it at two years, but I, I don't know. It also depends like the softer your water is, the faster it's going to break down. So if you have really soft water, like I do, it's going to break down faster, but even still, I, I'm still at, like that four year mark. How do you replace substrate? Uh, you pretty much start all over. <laughs> you take out the tank or take everything out of the tank. You scoop out your substrate with like a dustpan, and then you put new substrate in. It's not easy my lfs has them in tissue cultures yes ar mini in a tissue culture is amazing i've tried a lot of tissue culture plants um and it really seems hit or miss but ar mini in a tissue culture is always awesome i've never had any issues with that plant in tissue culture uh so i've been lucky i've got 27 tanks and zero duckweed i've been ridiculously careful about it yep like i wouldn't even buy a fish from people if there's someone local that's selling fish and they have duckweed in their tank i'm like nope i don't want them anymore i don't even even if i don't see any duckweed in the bag it's still there somewhere it's invisible i don't know it's a fish ate it and it's gonna poop out in a whole leaf and man it's awful awful can you use plants from ponds and streams and aquarium so a lot I, I think what you're gonna find the issue being is that usually at least in my area Ponds and streams are very cold in comparison to my aquarium. Uh, so usually when I transfer them over, they die off and never come back. But if you're somewhere like Florida, you, you're probably safe. I mean, I don't know if it's legal in Florida to take plants out of the wild. It's not in my state, but maybe it is in Florida. Florida is one of those states that has like everything. At some point, it's got to be legal to take everything out of the wild from Florida because at, at this point what's left in florida that's like native <laughs> is there any is there anything native left in florida or has it all been taken over by pythons and 
an invasive species. I don't know. Uh, T shot says, Seafood Aquatics, would you personally rather float water sprite or planet? It depends. If I was breeding like guppies, um, I would float it, or any live bear, I would float it. Um, otherwise, I normally plant it. I do normally plant it. Uh, do you think Hydrocoddle Japan is an easy carpet? No. Uh, I think it's an easy plant to grow under the right conditions. So, highlight. You know, you don't necessarily need CO2, but you definitely need fertilizers. Um, it's not something that I would put in a beginner setup and think that they're going to be, like, successful. Kaler's Aquatic says, Corey, how's the pizza? How's the pizza? He's probably left by now to go eat. And I don't blame him because I am starving. What is your favorite fish ever and why? My favorite fish ever is rainbow fish. I cannot pick a favorite rainbow fish, but definitely rainbow fish because they're colorful, they're active, and they have great personalities. What are your thoughts on Jungle Bell? Jungle Bell is awesome when you get it to grow. When you get it to grow. Um, thanks, Corey, Aquarium Co-op, for recommending your channel. First year with live plants. Appreciate your knowledge. Well, thank you, Susan. I appreciate you coming over from Aquarium Co-op, and I appreciate Aquarium Co-op sending people over. Um, what carpet plant would you recommend for non-CO2 tank with eco-complete? Definitely dwarf or micro chain sword. So I talked about this a little bit at the beginning. Uh, dwarf is going to be like right around five to seven inches. Micro is going to be two inches. So depending on how tall you want your carpet to be would be which one of those I would pick. But by far my favorite like non co2 carpeting plant is dwarf or micro uh, do you test for gh and kh and other parameters if so what for for val i don't i am i am pretty anti-testing for plants um in general yeah uh when i was like hardcore into plants i tested for everything now i have a pretty good idea on what i can do and what it's going to take to grow that plant so i don't really have to test anymore but if you're new to the hobby, I would probably test, 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 test. Always, always test. It's one of the things I see most in Facebook groups um, is like, hey, something's wrong with my fish. I took my water to the to the pet store and they tested it and it looks fine. Um, if you have fish, you need a test kit. Don't go, don't go to fish stores. Don't rely on them. They could do the test wrong. Their test kit could be expired. Um, there's a lot of things that could go wrong with taking your 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 water into a fish store and having them test it um you know you can you can buy the test strips for like 15 bucks uh you could buy the liquid test kit for like 25 bucks um or you can keep spending 10 bucks every week on fish that you that die and you replace it so um a, t a test kit is definitely something that should be in your arsenal especially as a beginner at all times at what point do you think I should take my pearl weed from co-op out of the pots they arrived in? First time I did it right away to float and everything died. Growing well in pot second round. I would probably, what is it, pearl weed? I would probably wait, how tall? I would clip them when you can get like five inches from the clipping and keep five inches in the pot. And then I would replant them, replant the clippings. Lopez says, sorry, Bob, got to keep logging off due to work. Car sales is a pain. Ooh, I like cars. I don't like selling cars, <laughs> but I like cars. <laughs> is Dwarf Micro Chainsword a slow grower? So it depends. It can grow really fast or really slow. Under CO2 and high light, both are going to grow really fast. Um, under low light, it's going to grow really slow. And then you can kind of gauge in between if you have medium light and you dose easy green then it's gonna grow fairly fairly all right you know it might take you like two months to carpet a 40 gallon breeder under like medium light with uh with ferts so yeah there's there's a lot of there's a lot of factors when you're talking about how fast or grow or or slow it's gonna carpet uh sorry oh i already got that one would you constantly pull out jungle valve or just let it naturally take over a tank? I love when plants naturally take over a tank. Uh, 
like the the jungle look like you could do like the dutch aqua skates which are all like pretty manicure tanks or like jungle where it's just everything is a big jungle mess of plants that is my absolute favorite absolute favorite got three from the co-op two weeks ago and just saw new leaves that i noticed today there you go uh, water Sprite, a good plant for no CO2. Taylor, yes. Water Sprite is definitely um, a good plant for no CO2. Like, that's definitely a good beginner. Uh, you get to watch a live stream at work, so not that bad until he has customers. <laughs> uh, what are my thoughts on Flourish from Seachem? I think it's overpriced and watered down. Simple enough. Um, most most of their products are going to be in my opinion watered down versions of other stuff you can buy for the same price so yeah i, I personally wouldn't recommend them the only c chem product i would recommend is equilibrium um but even that depends on your water parameters if you have you know hard water with lots of minerals i probably wouldn't use equilibrium uh, right. I heard no supplements. I'm gonna look. Thanks. Uh, four inch Nile puffer spooks every once, every one to two weeks in her 75 gallon. It's natural light and has aqua sky on it. 25% output. She sulks for a few days after. Would you add dithers and plants? Uh, I would definitely put in dithers. I think. Uh, you know, a lot of times these fish. Although, to be fair, I have zero experience with a Nile puffer. Um, if it's an ambush puffer, you probably don't want to put in dithers because <laughs> it'll kill them all. Speaking of which, I got a new puffer last week. Ooh. Um, but yeah, generally dither fish are always a good idea and make other fish feel more confident. And uh, yeah, usually can't go wrong. Uh, what about prime? Oh, yeah. So I should say Seachem prime. Good. Seachem safe. Good. I, when I when I say like water down and overpriced, I strictly mean like their plant supplement, like anything to do with plant supplements. Uh, so yeah, like their plant line. Uh, CCAM equals overpriced and undervalues API. I don't find API to be any better, honestly. Um, I think it's just all the same. API, I think is another overpriced water down. Like the the leaf zone. I don't, I don't think it's that good. I don't. Uh, what are dithers? Never mind. I'll Google it. You don't have to Google it. That's what I'm here for. So dither fish are fish that you put like schooling fish could be dither fish. So if you have fish that are, that are scared, um, in the wild, basically fish play off of other fish. So if you have, uh, f you know, like skittish fish and there's fish school and they see fish schooling around above them, they say, Hey, all right, there's no predators because if there is be if there is predators, these fish wouldn't be schooling above me. It's safe for me to come out and look around and eat, um, and things like that. So that's what that's what dither fish are. Basically, it's just a way of other fish knowing that it's safe to come out. So there's a lot of fish that that are you know that are peace they're, you know peaceful fish and you get them in your tank and they never come out. You never see them. It's because they never see other fish. So they think, boy something's eating all the fish around here because i haven't seen any fish and then you put in like a dozen neon tetras and they're schooling around and now all of a sudden that fish is out all the time because now it's looking around and be like oh there's fish here so it's safe to come out uh twin cities guppy says if i put fish with my dither fish with my zebra plecos will i see them more i will tell you what got my plecos out all the time including i, I mean i only have one zebra pleco um, my leopard frog pleco is now out all the time. My zebra pleco is out all the time. My L397 is out all the time. My L494, these are all in the same tank, um, is out all the time. Uh, basically, all my plecos are out all the time now. And the way the tank is set up is that there's guppy grass. Um, a, there's probably, about, it's a 40 gallon breeder. There's probably like five inches of guppy grass above that is the layer of duckweed Ugh. and then there's dither fish and then there's plecos so there's really only like this area of open swimming water and it's like right above the substrate so it's like they have this canopy of protection above them 
And now, I mean, they just sit out on rocks. They just sit out all the time now. So, I don't know. Maybe I just got lucky and they just come out more. And Or maybe, maybe having that gigantic ga canopy of plants makes them feel safe enough to come out. But they're always out now. Uh, Mr. Gromby says, I bought some feeder guppies. I'm going to be honest. They do bring out the other fish. Yep. And the size difference of the fish makes my goldfish look gigantic. Oh man! For people, for the people asking what puffer I got, it'll be released to the members this week, and then you, and then the, to the uh, subscribers uh, the week after. So you will all see it. You have to be patient. I haven't even picked it up yet, so I don't even know. I don't even know if it came in. So I. That's why I don't want to say because I don't want to jinx it. Um, yeah. So I'm a little stitious. A little stitious. Um, hmm, thanks for the info. Yeah, I mean, I don't know that I, honestly, when I had my zebra pleco colony, um, I didn't have any type of dither fish, I never saw them, and I had no plans. So, maybe, I mean, maybe there's something to it. If you want to try it, it's certainly not going to hurt anything. Okay, so someone messages me while I'm live, makes me nervous. Uh, Mr. Bentley, Bentley, live streaming, live streaming. I will respond after the live stream, Mr. Bentley. All right, what else we got going on? Small rainbows and small tetras will bring out your plecos. Just make sure you quarantine them for like a month. Yeah, yeah. Don't go adding like two dollar fish in with your zebra plecos. <laughs> Uh, Bob, I see a child's book on dithers in your future. I will never write a book ever. <laughs> Writing is definitely not something I enjoy. It's probably the thing I hate the most out of any subject in school. If anything required me to write something, I'm like, nope, I'm not going to do it. I'm not a writer. I don't enjoy it. I enjoy reading, but not writing. Uh, $5 super chat says your shoes are untied. Heck no, they're double knotted, my friend. You're not getting those untied. Since 1979? What? Hmm. Hmm. Uh, both pizzas are good. First time they both came super burnt. Ended up returning them and having them remade. It smelled super burnt from just coming in the house. So the new pizzas will be there a little after I'm done live streaming then, huh? That's that's what I'm hearing. Is that is that accurate? Failed to load. All right, there we go. Um, dragon layer, awesome. Oh, what happened? Oh, and thank you for the five dollar super chat. Uh, starting a brand new 46 gallon bow front for guppies and cherry shrimp once seasoned. Recommendations for plants to go with and your preferred substrate. So in a 46 gallon, I would definitely do eco complete. There's gonna be people out there that'll be like, oh, you can't do eco complete with shrimp. That is poppycock. You can definitely do eco complete with shrimp because I do it all the time. Um, so I feel like eco complete is probably cheap enough to fill up a 46 gallon. And then as far as what plants if you can find guppy grass, that's going to be amazing. If not, like water wisteria, water sprite. Um, you want like bushy plants so the, the guppy fry can hide. Uh, Sue McGill are beautiful, just very rare and even more expensive in my area. I hope in the future to keep an assorted nano rainbow fish aquarium. That sounds amazing. Some places, like, I mean, rainbow fish are pretty expensive in general, but some places, like, the prices are insane. Really insane. Uh, Dan says, plecos like shade. They don't, they don't come out in bright light, so a thick layer of floaters or a horizontal rock formation helps. They're in the open to be seen, but still shaded from bright lights. Uh, let's see. Man, there's still over 500 people here. That's crazy. Wait, what? Have you thought about rating and giving tips on tanks the community has and can either send you videos or pics of? 
Um, I have, and I've actually done this with uh, like YouTubers. Like I tried to do a, a series of basically like a virtual fish room tour where like a YouTuber sends in a tank. Uh, I think we made two videos and then ran out of volunteers. <laughs> um, I think it would be fun. I think it would be fun to do on a live stream. Um, and I've had it suggested multiple times. Um, so maybe, maybe, maybe. I think it, I, I, I do think it would be fun though. Um, I, I, I'm hesitant because I would hate to get to show someone's aquarium and then just have people trash on it. Like, I don't think that there's very many people in here that would trash on it, but I think there's, there are trolls that would potentially have a heyday with something like that. And, uh, you know, I got pretty good mods, so it's not too much of a concern, but it's still something I have to think about. Uh, the last thing I want is like a 14 year old kid sending in their glowfish tank and having people crap on it. And I've crapped on glowfish, but I would never crap on like someone else's like dream tank, you know? Just because glowfish are not for me, it doesn't mean that they're not for someone else. I mean, talk about a fish that probably gets an insane amount of kids into the hobby. So you got to give glowfish credit for that. But, yeah, I would hate to have, like, a kid send in a picture of their tank and then, you know, someone say some not nice things about it. Which has happened in the past, which is why I have to be, con to be uh, kind of cognizant of that. That's what candy is for, to wield the ban hammer. Uh, I would gladly put my pond up for review. Ooh, ponds would be awesome. Ponds would be awesome. Um, are floating plants or stem plants better for breeding rice fish and giving fry cover? I would go with, well, uh, see, it depends. Like water wisteria is a, is a stem plant, but you can float it. And I would use that over any other floating plant. Um, you'd have to get like water lettuce or something with like really long roots out of a floating plant. And, uh, so yeah, I would just do like water wisteria or water sprite and float it if I was concerned about it. Uh, Bob, do you think it's okay to add baby zebras with breeders? Baby zebras are about a half inch right now, or is it better to keep them separated? I would probably keep them separated until they're like an inch and a half, which is probably still going to be like three years from now. Uh, zebra plecos, right? <laughs> Not exactly the fastest growing fish out there, but uh, a half inch, I feel like, I mean, they're not going to like purposely like prey on them, but you could just have some dude that's like, I mean, think of you have like a male guarding a tube and this little half inch zebra pleco that doesn't know any better just rolls over and that male is like, get out of here and like maybe gives him a little nudge with his teeth at that at that age they're probably not going to recover from something like that so i would probably wait um and again the odds of something like that happen are, are so small but it's zebra plecos right i mean that's a 200 hundred dollar fish that you probably don't want to risk it like if you came to me with that question with bushy nose plecos hey, a colony breed bushy nose plecos like pff, you know it's a, it's a it sounds terrible but that's like a dollar fish so there's a there's a lot on the line when it comes to zebra plecos, so I'd probably I'd probably just play it safe. Why do a lot of the aquarium plant stores seem to be out of stock uh, a lot right now? Is there some some seasonality? No, it's COVID. It's COVID. It's international shipping, um, transcontinental shipping. Uh, it's a mess. It's a mess right now, uh, and. Um, they're not really seasonal because they're grown in greenhouses, but uh, plants, they just sell out fast. They sell out about as fast as you can get them. Streetwise says, Bob, I did outdoor tubs with organic soil. Like my tanks changed plans to just move plants, fish, shrimp to indoor tank for winter. What should I do with substrate only tubs in the winter? I would just leave them out there. I mean, I have... I have one of my tubs with um, just like a layer of dirt and mulm and decayed like leaves and roots and all kinds of crap in it. And honestly, like you get all kinds of organisms in there and the fish feed off of it. I would just leave them. I would leave the substrate. Uh, 
Stuart Kelly has been there. Hmm. You wouldn't see much of mine either than a thick layer of water lettuce. I, water lettuce. I do have an Osmo action camera, but I'm scared to put it in the water, even though it's waterproof. Oh, those things. I wouldn't worry about it. I have. I've had. I've used that one, but I also have the GoPro. No issues at all. I wouldn't. That's what they're made for. Best beginner puffer, probably the Amazon puffer, which is impossible to find right now. If you really want to go crazy, the Congo Spotted Puffer, they're about $200. Uh, that would be my next one. It would, it would be first on the list if they weren't $200. But an Amazon Puffer, you know, it gets about four or five inches. It can go in community tanks, and they're only about $20, uh, $20, 30 bucks in that range, if you can find them. Again, because not a lot of places are shipping right now, that it's one of those fish that are really hard to find. Puffers in general right now are pretty hard to find. Especially pea puffers. You can't find those suckers anywhere right now. Two longfin green dragons both turned out to be males. Ugh. I was pretty confident about that one, too. <sighs> well, at least you only got to find a female. It's it's honestly, two males is better than two females. So, I mean, the best, the best like, bristlenose plecos are way better in reverse trios. So, now you just got to find a female. Jeff Dixon with the $5 Super Chat says, thanks for all the great info and answering my questions. I try to get to everyone's questions, but there's 500 people here, so I apologize if I miss them. But apparently I didn't miss yours, Jeff, so thank you for the Super Chat. I appreciate it. Uh, I'm still trying to figure out how to get Dean's Congo Puffers. Um, <laughs> probably a long list of those, my friend. John says, got 25 one-inch baby zebras. Sell them or start a second or third colony. Whew. A one inch, I don't know that you're going to fetch much of a price for a one inch zebra. I, I personally wouldn't buy a one, one inch zebra pleco. Uh, but maybe people buy them. I don't know. That's that's really small though. Um, man, I don't know that I even want to ship a one inch zebra. Why not start three colonies? <laughs> I mean, really start pumping them out. Uh, Priscilla MK with the one dollar super chat. Thank you, Tampa Tom. What's up, buddy? It's always why I can't find my new Yamaha WR 250s anywhere right now. Yeah, motorcycles are selling for a premium right now, and I'm really thinking about selling mine. We'll see. I'm like 95% convinced to sell my motorcycle right now because they're for whatever reason, like the price on motorcycles is going up, which is weird because it's the fall, they should be going down. At least my specific motorcycle. I separated, I separated my male and female guppies for population control, but now my males are fighting. Is that normal behavior? Yeah, but they shouldn't really be fighting. They're probably just like like harmless sparring. You, you shouldn't get much fighting out of them, though, as far as like actual damaging. Um, you should be all right. I would, I would plant it the best I could, even use fake plants, uh, spawning moss, something just to break the line of sight if it really becomes a problem. Do puffers have to be species only? Some puffers, yes. Um, definitely. Some puffers are ambush pup or ambush ambush predators and they will eat anything in the tank. But uh, like Mabu puffers, you can put them with community fish, no problem. Amazon puffers, Congo spotted puffers, uh, do well in community tanks. Solo transportation would be an escape valve at these times. Uh, stop with the acronyms. Yes, we hate TLAs. Down with TLAs. Three-letter acronyms. Get it? Get it? TLA? I hate TLAs. Three-letter acronyms. Get it? I'm using an acronym to say I hate acronyms. No? Yeah, whatever. Uh, $20 super chat. Holy smokes. Yeah, really good info. Really appreciate the the comment about not crapping on someone's dream tank. Sometimes I see comments about people talking smack, and it's like, Why? pizza on me uh, ugh, I really am craving pizza since I had pizza at Randy's house the other day ugh, I'm supposed to be dieting but I want pizza so bad right now you have no idea <laughs> pizza is so good I miss it I miss it already I miss it Harry Puffer is a fuzzy little death tornado yes there's a lot of them 
a lot of them. D23 Perry says, Steve Fun Aquatics, is there any way to successfully plant a cichlid tank? Yes, absolutely. But specifically, what type of cichlid? I mean, angelfish, epistos, African cichlids, South American cichlids, Central American. There's a lot of cichlids out there, and a lot of them can go with plants. Um, White Knight or Hawaiian. Yeah, the, the name of that pizza is pretty questionable, but boy, was that pizza good. If you don't know what uh, he's referencing, uh, there, it's in my last video. You'll just have to watch the video I put out on Sunday. And uh, there's a pizza that's called the White Knight Pizza, and it's so good. It was really good. What's the benefit difference between a sponge filter and a hang on back? Well, the thing I don't like about hang on backs is that they're generally made pretty cheaply. Uh, they can be noisy. And yeah, I don't, I'm just, I'm a sponge filter guy myself, and I like them because they're quiet, they're easy to maintain, they don't ever break. It's impossible to break a sponge filter. <laughs> and they're cheap, and they're cheap. But hang on back filters, you know, they're good for water flow. That's what I use them for. Uh, they're good at removing crap out of your water as far as like any type of debris, you know, organics breaking down, dead leaves, things like that. So they both have their place, but it's really more personal preference. They both get the job done. And that's, that's the most important takeaway when it comes to like filters. Uh, people always say sumps, canisters, hang on back, uh, sponge filters, which one's the best? When in reality, they all work. They all, they all do what they're supposed to do. It really comes down to like personal preference, um, budget, and do you want to spend nine billion dollars on a sump system? Not a lot of people do, uh, you know. And, and same like an FX6 is like two hundred, three hundred dollars. I don't even know. Uh, overpriced. That's all I know. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's just personal preference, really. Um, hey Bob, Nick here from Shrewby Business. We should get pizza sometime. I don't know that there's anywhere open yet. Is there any like sit down sit down places open yet? But I'm down. I'm down. I was actually um, thinking about you the other day. I remember we touched base right before COVID hit. <laughs> so, been a long year, my friend. A long year. Uh, if I thought my beta had dropsy, what do you recommend? By the looks of it online, mass panic is the only solution. Clean, 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 clean water. Clean water. Um, I'm back for the end. I'm back for the end. What plants for discus or angelfish? Any plant you want. Any plant you want. The nice thing about discus is that they require a little bit warmer water, which makes your plants grow faster. So that's nice. Danikin Aquatics, what's up, buddy? Uh, Fierce Wolf says, I was in Washington last week and ate inside a spaghetti factory. Or at spaghetti factory, huh? I didn't know that like sit down restaurants were actually open. I mean, I guess they are, but I don't know. I very rarely leave the house anyways. I wouldn't know. <laughs> Learn to make some fine pizza. I've been doing a lot of my own cooking lately, a lot of my own cooking, but pizza, maybe, maybe. Okay, Bob, if you had to spend $100 on plants, uh, what are you buying? Well, I could just tell you what I bought. So I did buy plants this week, and I will tell you exactly what plants I bought. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, let's see. Here we go. Open. Open. So I this week, I bought Cryptocorn Lucens, Lugwidia Arcuata, Needle Leaf, uh, Needle Leaf Lugwidia, uh, what else did I buy? Hornwort, Lugwidia ovalis, Baby Tears, Java Fern, Java Fern Trident, Anubius Nana, uh, Cryptocorn Wendetii Green, Cryptocorn Wendetii Red, and Cardinal Plant. All plants I just bought today. Whew, I'm uh, want to know what. If you want to know what I'm using those plants on, uh, I will tell you that I'm building a wall of 40 gallon breeders that are uh, going to be planted. Almost all of them. They're going to be planted. There's going to be a couple African uh, Lake Tanganyika tanks that won't be planted, but everything else are going to be planted 40 breeders. And that's what those plants are going to be used for. 
There's a little secret insider info on things that are coming. A wall of 40 breeders. It's going to be awesome. Uh, not really a wall because there's a window and I'm not blocking the window. But, yeah. It's only 8. It's 8 40 breeders. That's pretty awesome, though. It's going to look good. It's going to be metal. Uh, anyways, that's it. We have hit two hours. And it seems like it's only been like two minutes. That's how you know it's been a good live stream. So I want to thank everyone for coming. Uh, let's see. Who do, what, who, do, who do we got here? Aquarium Co-op, Michael Young, Rob, Karen, Fish Tank Barn, Jack, Bob, Kaler, Audrey, Joel, Trevor, Larry, um, Escobar, Bob, Kaler again, Kent's Fish, Kent's Fish. Oh, I might have missed those Kent's Fish. I apologize with the two $1 Super Chats. S, Jeff, Dixon, Priscilla, and I'm going to just say Lee because it's L-I or a lie, I don't know, with the $20 Super Chats. And then, thank Larry, Larry, Clay, Charlie for becoming members. Oh, and Scott's Aquatics, who did it before the stream a couple days ago. But uh, that's four new members this week. That's pretty awesome. Be sure to check out that music video, the Murphy music video. And uh, I want to thank everyone else just for hanging out. Um, you, Even the lurkers, you are all important. Mods, of course keeping the undesirables out of here. Uh, I appreciate it. Uh, we're going to be here again next week, Monday, 5 p.m. Pacific. Uh, I don't know if anyone is streaming after me. I apologize. I cannot send you off with the hashtag, but I don't know. Does anyone stream after me? I don't know. I feel like that's something I should know, but I don't know. Anyways, I'll see you all next week. I hope you guys have an excellent week. It's just starting, so it's up to you. Make it a good one. And it will be a good one. And I'll see you all next week as soon as I find this stop streaming button. <laughs> What's the best question to spam for profit? Ah, jeez. What's the best moss for profit?